starting off with Menel Cap versus David Dvorak. I am going with Menel Cap to win this fight, but remember, David Dvorak, a very good striker, and he's got a lot of submissions, but he's coming off a loss to Mateus Nicolau, who recently fought Matt Chanel, and I think he might have lost a bit of confidence, especially after he lost by unanimous decision. If it was a split decision, I think he might be able to come back and beat someone like Menel Cap, but Menel Cap is full of power, he has got good takedown defence, and I think he'll probably win this fight by decision, but I wouldn't be surprised if he got a KO in this fight. And you've got to remember, it's only three rounds as well. And he beat Zalgas Zumalelegedov. And that's the guy who should have beat Charles Johnson. But he was robbed in that fight. And I think when he fights David Dorak, he's either going to win by decision or he's going to get a KO. He won't be able to submit him. Even though he's got like five submissions on his record. But David Dorak's never been submitted in his career. Manel Cap has, but that was earlier on. But you've got to give the jiu-jitsu advantage to David Dorak. But on the feet, I think Manel Cap is much better and I think he will win this fight. And you've got to remember, they both haven't fought in almost a year. Seven months for David Dorak and I believe it's 11 months for Manel Cap. So ring rust might be a thing in this fight as well. But they've obviously been training. But yeah, I have to pick Manel Cap. Next we go to Brian Battle versus Rinak. Faretinov. A lot of people are going to overrate this guy. Like this guy said in the comments, you are right. A lot of people do overrate Russian fighters because they've got Ov in their name. And I think in this fight, Brian Battle is going to win. He's shown he's got a lot of power. He's good at jiu-jitsu. Rinat Faretinov. I think he is a balanced fighter. He's got KO, submissions, wrestling. But I'm giving the striking edge to Brian Battle. I would give the jiu-jitsu edge Probably to Brian Battle because he gets more variations when it comes to submissions. A lot of Renat Fetinov's submissions have just been plain guillotine chokes. So like people going for double legs, single legs on him and he just catches them. And he hasn't got a KO in the UFC. And he fought a guy called Andreas Michelaeus. And that guy, he fought Alex Bahir and got KO'd. But Renat's beat him to a decision. And I don't think he's going to win this fight against Brian Battle. And even if he does get him down to the ground, I think there will be the threat of the triangle choke. And I think Brian Battle could win this by submission and submit this guy for the first time in his career. Or he could knock him out like he did to Takashi Sato by a head kick, like a minute into the round. So yeah, I'm picking Brian Battle. Mache versus Rafa Garcia. This kid's got a lot of hype around him. Remember, he's young, 23 years old, from China. He's won his last five fights. Three of them being a KO, but Rafa Garcia, I think he's going to get the job done. He's got more experience. He's 28. He's fought the bigger names. He beat Nathan Levy, and that's a good win to have on your record. He's a very good grappler, but what confuses me about Rafa Garcia is how did he lose to Drakkar Close by getting out-wrestled? Drakkar Close is a striker, but he somehow managed to out-grapple him, and he has a threat of jiu-jitsu, which is weird to think about. You would think the guy with jiu-jitsu against some striker is going to have the wrestling and BJJ edge, but it didn't look like that in the fight. Yes, he had the BJJ edge, but what I mean by that is he didn't have the wrestling edge. And this kid, I don't think he's going to have the wrestling edge like Drakkar Close did. I think Rafa Garcia is going to go in there, shoot for a takedown early and control him. And then maybe in the second or third round, I think he's going to get like a rear naked choke on him. But you could argue, when you look at Rafa Garcia's record, he has struggled a lot against strikers. Whereas when he fights against people who grapple, he's done better. But this kid is new. He's fought in some other promotion, I believe, in China. I might be wrong about that. And the people on his record, they don't look the best. But he did get a KO on his UFC debut against Steve Garcia. But Steve Garcia's chin concerns me a lot. That's why I'm saying, I'll, I'll give him credit. Because he's young. But what I'm trying to say is... Don't expect him to go in there and flatline someone like Rafa Garcia. It's just not going to happen. Especially when he's never been knocked out or submitted in his career. Saeed Nurmagedov versus Saeed Yakub. I don't know. Saeed Yakub Karakmanov. Right. I'm going with Saeed Nurmagedov. But it's not a confident pick because they're very similar in terms of styles where they like to throw kicks and they like to shoot for takedowns. But the striking edge I'll probably give to Saeed Yukub because Saeed Nurmagedov, a lot of people are going to call him boring. He's like one of those Russian fighters who will take you down and control you on the ground and grind out to a decision. I think he's got like eight decision wins. He's annoying to fight against. Saeed Yukub, he's got a strong guillotine. I believe he got a guillotine on Trevin Jones. And he's good at jiu-jitsu. But like I said, jiu-jitsu guys, for some weird reason, they end up having... 
some submission losses on their record, even though they prioritise that more than anything. It's because they fight in their guards in weird angles and they just get caught. It's the way it is. And I think Saeed Nermageddo is too smart to let that happen. I think he will control him on the ground and probably win it by decision. His only loss came to Ryan Barcelos in the UFC. But at that time, he was on like a six to seven fight win streak. So we had a lot of confidence going in the fight and he did beat him unanimously. But I am going to pick Saeed to win this fight. Jake Matthews versus Max Emmelsberger. This one's the obvious one. I wouldn't call it a lot, but it's very obvious what's going to happen. Jake Matthews is going to win this fight by either KO or submission. Matt Samuelsberger, he came from the NFL. So wrestling, not the best, not the worst. Very average, striking, decent. Jake Matthews for Andre Fialho, put him away. And I think he was an underdog. I had a lot of people picking Andre Fialho to beat Jake Matthews. And he dealt with him. And remember, Andre Fialho is young as well. And so is Jake Matthews. But Matt Samuelsberger, he's got a chin on him. And I'm surprised about that. Especially when he comes from NFL. And a lot of people from that sport get brain damage. And I think Jake Matthews will capitalise on that in this fight. And catch him. Knock him down. And look for a submission. But I don't think he's going to KO him out cold. Because Matt Samuelsberger, like I said before, has got a chin on him. He's very durable. But the problem with him is, I do worry about if someone like Jake Matthews goes to the ground and tries to lock up a submission, he'll struggle to get up. Like we saw against Matt Semmelsberger against Alex Morona, he was struggling. Against a guy like that, he's quite balanced, like he can wrestle, strike and do jiu-jitsu. And I do think this is a massive step up. Remember, Matt Semmelsberger is 42 in the UFC, like ranked, not age. And Jake Matthews is 18. So for them to match make each other, I'm very surprised about that, especially after he lost to Alex Morona. Cody Brandage versus Michelle Oliasechuk, I can't pronounce the name, but I am going to pick Cody Brandage. A lot of people are going to pick Michelle, but I'm telling you, you can't pick him just because he beat Sam Alvey. He hasn't got too many big names on his record. He did beat that one Russian guy who was 14-1, and one, but apart from that, he hasn't beat anyone big. And you'll say Cody Brandage hasn't either, but he was meant to fight Rodolfo Vieira. So he's been training for a long time for a fight because he knew he was going to have one. So that fight got cancelled. And then the Trazon Gore knocked him out, full of power, great grappling, good jiu-jitsu. Michael Oniashuk, he is a big middleweight. So I do think Cody Brundage will struggle to knock him out on the feet. I will definitely give the power advantage to Oniashuk. But when it comes to grappling, again, you might argue he might struggle to get him down because he's big. And I wouldn't call him a weight bully, but he's big. So he's going to struggle to take him down. But he's got the jiu-jitsu and BJJ also. So he could get him against the fence or something. Take his back. Look for like a submission off there. Something like that. And I do think Cody Brundage will win this fight by submission or decision. Because I think he will get him down eventually. And he'll grind out to a decision. And because Michelle's so big as a middleweight, I think he'll struggle to get off his back. Just like how Jan Blahovic struggled to get off his back against Mohamed and Akalayev. I think something like that might happen. Drew Dober versus Bobby Green. I don't know why everyone's picking Drew Dober to win this fight. I'm very confident Bobby Green will get this done. Drew Dober, yes, he beat Terence McKinney. And I think that's why a lot of people are picking him to win. But when you go back to that Terence McKinney fight, he hurt Drew Dober early. But I think he got a bit tired because Terence McKinney is very explosive. And when you are very explosive, you leave yourself open to getting caught. You see it with people like Yaquin Buckley, explosive, gets caught. And someone like Drew Dober, Granite Chin, Bobby Green, technical boxer. I think people are forgetting this guy did fight Rafael Fizio. He didn't win the fight, but he didn't get battered, in my opinion, in that fight. I'd give the boxing edge to Bobby Green in this fight. Submissions, you got to give it to Drew Dober. Even though I don't think this fight will go to the ground. And the only way it will go to the ground, I think, is if Bobby Green somehow cracks Drew Dober's chin... Which I don't think he'll do. I think he's going to technically like outbox him. And then he'll win the fight on points. And remember he had to fight Islam Makashev. But that was on short notice. I can't remember how many months or weeks it was in advance. He lost that fight. Got Tika. But he doesn't really get knocked out. I know Poirier knocked him out. But I don't think someone like Drew Dober is going to be able to do it. Drew Dober can win this by decision. But I don't think he will. And he beat Rafael Alvarez. And again he keeps his chin up. He gets caught a lot in fights. And I know I said Bobby Green doesn't have power, but he'll score a lot of points and he will bust up his face. 
Like, look at that Rafael Alvarez. You saw him, like, dancing and taunting Drew Dober, and then he gets caught with a body shot or, like, a hook to the body, sits him down to the ground. Bobby Green isn't going to do that. Yeah, he'll catch, like, Drew Dober to the body and then come up with, like, a punch to the head, but he's got better head movement than Drew Dober. I just think all aspects of boxing better for Bobby Green. Drew Dober's more like a heart merchant, like, he won't quit. He'll take all these punches and he'll keep coming forward. But I don't think that's going to beat someone like Bobby Green. Who you might say looking at his record. He hasn't got the best wins. But there's something about his boxing style. Which I think will work against a fighter like Drew Dober. Someone who's going to come forward. And you can just see Bobby Green jabbing on the back foot. Moving out of the way of his punches. And then coming in blitzing him. With a cross and then a hook and then an uppercut. Combinations after combinations. Won't knock him out. Maybe might knock him down. But I don't think that will happen. And then he will win by decision. And it's only three rounds, so I think he'll win this fight. Alex Caceres versus Juliana Rosa. I am going to pick Juliana Rosa to win this fight. I think you'd be stupid to pick Alex Caceres to win this fight. He's like Michael Chiesa in the way that he's a jiu-jitsu guy with mid to basic level striking who gets submitted a lot. He's got bad submission defense, but he's got good submission offense. Juliana Rosa, good submission defense, never been submitted and good submission offense. And he's got very good striking to go with it. It seems like a no-brainer to pick him to win. If he somehow loses this fight, it will be by decision. By Alex Casera somehow out-wrestling him. And I don't think that's going to happen. But that's the only possible way he can beat him. I don't see him being the first guy to submit Julian Arosa. They've had a similar amount of fights. And you look at Julian Arosa's record... He hasn't beaten lots of big names. He has got a few. He's beaten Charles Jourdain. That's a good win. But then you look and see, how did he lose to someone like Sun Wu Choi? But then he beat Nate Landwehr. And then when he first entered the UFC, he was on a three fight losing streak. He's quite inconsistent. Like he can win like three fights in a row and then he'll lose one. And he also fought Paddy Pimblett and he lost that. And he was on a two fight winning streak at the time. But there's something about him. There's a trend in his record, if you look at it, where he'll have three fights, he'll win them. And then he'll lose them. Apart from his earlier fights where you see he won a lot of them. And he even got KO'd by Artem Lobov. I know it was seven years ago. But I'm just like, how has Artem Lobov done it? The guy with a negative record. But he's improving. The jiu-jitsu is still there. And I think he will probably submit Alex Caceres in this fight. Amir Albazi versus Alessandro Costa. I think this might. I'm not going to say it now. But this could be the lock of the card. And the reason I say that is this guy... Alessandro Costa, he hasn't had a fight in the UFC yet. Yes, he fought in the Contender Series. That doesn't mean you've had a fight in the UFC. And then two months after that fight, where he didn't even win it convincingly, he went in another promotion and fought and got a KO win, and the guy he fought was 6-3. and three. Yes, that's good that he got a KO, but I just don't think he's ready for someone like Amir Albazi, who's getting more experience now. He beat Francisco Figueiredo. Not too good of a fighter, but that's better than a lot of the guys cost to beat. He beat Zalgas. Zalgas is a very good win to have in your record. I don't think people give him the credit he deserves because he lost to Charles Johnson. But that Charles Johnson fight against Zalgas was a robbery. Malcolm Gordon by triangle choke. Again, the guy who Mohamed Makayev fought. And if there was like 10 seconds or like 20 seconds left of that round, Malcolm Gordon was going to put a rear naked choke on Mohamed Makayev. And he probably would have tapped out. Mohamed Makayev is very good, but Malcolm Gordon exposed some weaknesses in his game. And it's going to be a massive step up to fight someone like this already. 15-1, and one. he's 12-2, Alexandro Costa. I think Amir Albazi is going to beat him by like either submission or decision. Not KO because they're at the lighter weight classes. You don't see a lot of like finishes when it comes to like KOs on the feet. If you do... Then they're just something else because it's rare to see like flyweights getting like flash knockouts all the time. They just don't happen. But they're good at submissions and they're more technical. And I do think they'll win this by submission or decision. And then we go to the co-main event. Armin Sarukin versus Demiris Magilov. This is going to be like a highly skilled fight. And I am going to pick Armin Sarukin. Don't get me wrong. Demiris Magilov can win this fight because in my opinion he is the best striker. But I think the wrestling of Armin Sarukin is going to cause problems for Demiris Magilov. Remember that fight that Armin had with Islam Makashev? 
Even back then, he was showing promising things in his wrestling. Makachev won it, obviously, by looking at his record. Armin Sarukin was probably like 23 at the time. He's older now, got more experience. Lost to Mateus Gamrot, but a lot of people would have considered that fight a robbery. And it was very close and it was very technical. And his striking has improved massively. But the Armin Sarukin fight of Makachev, there was no striking in it. It was just pure wrestling. But in that Gamrot fight, there was a lot of striking. And he knocked him down in that fight. And I know a knockdown doesn't mean you won the fight, but he did. You could just tell. The wrestling. Gamrot was a good wrestler, but striking, I'm very suspect. He gets knocked down, it seems like, in almost every fight. He got knocked down in the Armand Sarukian fight, the Benil Dariush fight, the Guru and Kutaladze fight. But Demir Zemagulov's got a chin on him as well. But I do worry about the takedown defense. And he has shown he's got good takedown defense, but this is Armand Sarukian. The wrestling on him is something else. Like, if you're making it competitive with Makachev at a young age back then, that shows you a lot. And he beat Matt Freviola, the guy who knocked out Ottoman Azaita somehow. I don't know how he pulled that off. So when you want to look at their records, they have fought similar opposition, but I just think because the wrestling of Armin Sarukin can be so dominant at times, and he's striking, he's got to go with it, I think he's going to win this fight. But if he keeps it on the feet, I think Demir's going to outstrike him. Because remember, he went to a split decision with Guru and Kutalata. I do think Demir won that fight. And he beat Rafael Alves unanimously. I'd be surprised if he didn't. And he beat Thiago Moises three years ago. So, Demir is Magulov at one point. He wasn't too active in the UFC. But he has got a lot of skill to go with it. He's on the older side now. He's 31. Armin Sarukin, 26. He's getting older now. But he's improving every fight. And arguably, it should have been him fighting Benil Dariush. And I think he would make that competitive in that type of fight as well. So yeah, I have to pick Armin Sarukian. Right, we're at the main event. So I'm picking Jared Kananir to win this fight. It just seems obvious. He might not win it. But I do think he'll win that fight because Sean Strickland, he likes to walk people down. And when you walk people down, look what happens. When you fight these top guys who are explosive, you're going to get caught. We saw it with Alex Bahia. went to parry. Alex Bahia beat his jab and caught him with a hook. Well, not his jab, but he hooked him around the parry and KO'd him. And I do think Jared Cannonier will probably win this by KO. Decision, I'll be surprised about because he's wild. He has got good cardio, though. Because if you watch that Adesanya fight, he did get caught with a lot of leg kicks, but he did keep walking him down. Like, he was getting chopped in the legs, but still coming at him five rounds. And he's a big middleweight. Remember, he used to fight at heavyweight at one point. He's got all that power. Sean Strickland, he has got power, but... When you think of Strickland, he's not that guy to just go and just knock everyone out. He likes to walk you down, just piece you up and hurt you. And remember, he beat Brendan Allen. He beat a grappler. He can do well against grapplers because he can wrestle. I don't know why he doesn't show it, but I think he wants to prove to everyone that he's an entertaining fighter, make more money in the process, than just fight smart. Because you know what Sean Strickland's like. Imagine if he had wrestled with Alex Bahia. A lot of people were saying that he should have done that. And if he had done that against Alex Bahia, he could have arguably won that fight, but he didn't. And he doesn't really show his wrestling that often. And in this fight, you never know. He might have learned from getting hit. Like, Jared Cannonier might have knocked some sense into him. And he might decide to grapple with Jared Cannonier. And in that aspect, he could win the fight by doing that. But I know Sean Strickland. He will not do it. He'll try and out-jab him. And he might bust up the nose of Jared Cannonier. I can see him, like, bleeding from all the jabs of Sean Strickland, but if he tries to parry against someone like Jared Cannonier, he will get knocked out, because Jared Cannonier is known for throwing loads of overhands. Not like Tyrone Woodley level, but he will throw them with power, and he'll look to catch Sean Strickland on the chin. He's not someone who's going to try and body snatch you and then come up to the head. Sean Strickland should see these shots coming, but I know he won't. He won't measure the distance at all. He's just going to stand in front of him like he did to Uriah Hall. Start teeping his leg, even though Jared Kinnanir is not going to throw any leg kicks. And then start throwing jabs to his head. And not throwing anything explosive, even though I think he's a big middleweight. Like, he could arguably maybe fight a light heavyweight. Like, I think he had a catch weight at, like, 194 pounds or something once, or 190. But I don't know how he's the favourite going into this. I think it's because of his personality or something. Because just by watching Sean Strickland, and we talk about styles make fights... I can only see Jared Cannonier knocking him out. If you have someone coming forward at something with loads of power, do you expect them not to get knocked out? Like imagine a fighter just walking towards Alex Bahay. You don't see that often unless it's Sean Strickland. All the others are on the back foot. But 
when Sean Strickland does it, he gets knocked out. And he'll do the same thing against Jared Cannonier. I hope he shows off some wrestling, but I'm very, very confident that he won't. So yeah, that's it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Talk to you soon.